Hello everyone and welcome back. So in the past few lectures we have spoken about the DTT diagram which depicts the heat treatment of steels and helps us understand what kind of microstructure will develop in a particular heat treatment process. But one thing that uh, you would have realized by now is the fact that uh, all these uh, transformations that uh, we have been talking about so far are isothermal transformations, okay. In the sense, uh, the sample is held at a particular temperature, at a constant temperature and at that temperature uh, you are allowing the reaction or the transformation to occur, okay. But practically in uh, most of the cases, the heat treatment is not done that way. Only in very few cases the heat treatment is done isothermally. Most of the cases the sample is taken to the austenite range and cooled from that temperature continuously during the heat treatment process, right. So therefore we need to also consider another diagram which will depict that situation where the steel is continuously cooled from the austenite region all the way to the room temperature for the heat treatment process, right. So since it is continuously cooled and we are looking at again with respect to time, this is known as uh, continuous cooling transformation or CCT in short. So we have to have a look at this CCT diagram also when you are talking about a heat treatment uh, scenario where the specimen is continuously cooled. from the austenite region, okay. So like every other heat treatment, what is first done? The specimen is taken to a temperature where it is uh, austenite. So that is what is known as austenitization, right. So this is first austenitized. and after that it is cooled. With varying cooling rates depending on the type of uh, heat treatment, and the shape and size of the specimen. So this is what we are going to look at right now as to how that would be depicted in a similar diagram like what we had for the isothermal case, okay. So here we need to show the continuous cooling, okay. So we would again take the example of a eutectoid composition and look at the CCT diagram for the same. See this uh, continuous cooling will also have some implications in the sense how it would vary with respect to time and that difference you could see if you compare the CCT diagram with the isothermal diagram. So if you superimpose these two in one single plot then you can easily see the differences. Therefore let us first bring the isothermal diagram over here, the isothermal or the TDT diagram of eutectoid steel and then we will bring the, we will bring the CCT diagram also on the same plot, okay. Thank you. 
So I'm just uh, you know roughly drawing it, and I'm just uh, drawing it as a dotted line here. This is the isothermal or the TTT diagram. for a eutectoid composition okay i need to bring out some temperatures here to uh, you know make it little more clear so just give me some time The dotted one that you see over here, you know, that belongs to the isothermal transformation, the TTT diagram of eutectoid steel. And the solid lines that I have drawn, that is actually the CCT curve of a eutectoid steel. Why it is shifted to right, that is what we are going to discuss now as to what is the reason for this shift that you see, right? It is shifted lower and right of the TTT diagram, isn't it? So that could be understood if you just take some uh, pulling paths again and try and understand as to what is happening along those uh, cooling paths and how it would have uh, it would have happened in case of isothermal transformation and what would happen if it is continuously cooled and not held at a particular temperature, okay? If you could just bring that out over here with the help of these two set of curves, one belonging to isothermal that will tell you what would have happened or what could have happened if it was held isothermally and then you have the uh, continuous cooling uh, curve also that will tell you what will happen in this case because you are cooling it down continuously. Okay? So let us just draw one particular path having a particular cooling rate and try and see what would happen here. Okay? But before that, let me also try and mark the temperatures because that is also important here. So this is the MS temperature, just above 200 here. Two hundred degrees Celsius. Now let me let me take this path and draw it over here. So let us say the uh, steel is being cooled from the austenite region through a path like this, okay, where it uh, crosses the isothermal diagram at this particular point, let us say point A. Okay. So the time needed for that is uh, this one, the corresponding time is this okay that could be anything let's say you know 5 to 6 seconds something in that range okay so with the 5 or 6 seconds it is uh, coming to this point when it is crossing the isothermal diagram okay so what does that mean that means if it were held at 650 degrees celsius isothermally then the perlite would have started forming at this point but isothermally, right? 
So till the time it touches upon this uh, perlite start curve, it was at a temperature which is above 650 degree Celsius, isn't it? Let us say this is 5 second. So during this whole of 5 second, this specimen was at a temperature which is above 650, isn't it? Because at 650 only it is coming and touching this uh, perlite start curve, right? So at higher temperature, the perlite start time would also be longer, isn't it? And therefore, since it is continuously cooled, the actual start time for the perlite will be somewhere here, which is shifted to longer time. Because as I said, till the cooling curve touches the perlite start curve up to that point, it was above 650 degrees Celsius, right? And in continuous cooling, longer time also means lower temperature because it is continuously cooling down, isn't it? Therefore, this start point will shift towards right and below the isothermal curve. So, it will be at a point which is around here. Let us call that point as B. Okay. So, had it been held isothermally at 650 degree Celsius, the perlite transformation would have started at point A. But we have not done so, we are continuously cooling it and therefore, the perlite transformation would start at a longer time at point B. Okay. Now, you could see that the cooling path, path 1 is crossing the isothermal finish curve at point C and following a similar logic, we can say that the completion of the perlite transformation in this continuous cooling process would not happen at C, but would happen at a point D, which is shifted down and right of point C. So, what we are saying right now, if you look at this uh, path 1 and the isothermal curves first, at 650 degree it is uh, touching the perlite start curve at around 5 seconds. Okay? So, if it was held isothermally at 650 degree Celsius, the perlite will start forming at 5 seconds, starting from 5 seconds. right? But we are not holding it, we are still cooling it down. So now what will happen? So till 5 seconds, till it touches the perlite start curve, it was at a temperature which is above 650, right? Because we are continuously cooling. And now looking at the uh, isothermal diagram again, higher the temperature at this range, longer is the time needed for the perlite start. Just look at the curve, isn't it? At this range, if you go to the higher temperature, look at this blue line that I have drawn just now, higher temperatures means longer time. Now, in continuous cooling, longer time also means lower temperature. If time increases, temperature decreases, right? You are continuously cooling it. So, it is not only about shifting along the time base, along the x axis, it will also shift down the y axis. So therefore, this point A will shift lower and right of the isothermal line. So you would get a point over here for the start of the perlite transformation if you follow this cooling path 1. Okay. Following the same logic, we can say that this uh, finish point C would be shifted to D, down and right of the isothermal curve and that would happen for all other cooling rates also, all other paths also and you would get the locus of that in terms of these solid lines that you have here, this line for the start and this line for the finish of the perlitic transformation when you are cooling it continuously in case of 
a eutectoid stain. So therefore, CCT curves are always shifted right and below of the isothermal curve. Okay. So these uh, TDT curves are also known as IT curves because it is isothermally held. So therefore, it is also known as isothermal diagrams. Okay. So the CCT curve is shifted to right and below of the IT curve. This much is understood. Okay. So rest of the things we can discuss with respect to this now. Once we have understood that it is shifted towards right, okay, rest of the things will fall in line as we draw some more cooling curves and see what is happening with respect to these two solid lines now. We can forget about the dotted lines once we have drawn the CCT curve and we know that we are continuously cooling it. So the transformation would occur according to those two solid lines now. Okay, so that is what we are going to talk about from now on. Whenever you talk about the practical heat treatment of steels, where it is most of the time cooled down continuously, okay, including your martensite transformation. That is anyway is a continuous cooling because we are simply dropping and quenching it, right. But for others also, even if you do not quench it, the heat treatment generally is done in this manner rather than isothermally holding it at a constant temperature, okay. So if you just follow this line, you know, it is not going below, isn't it? It is not that of due to lack of time or something, I did not draw it, but there is no bainite curve here. There is a reason for that, I will come to it. In continuous cooling, bainite does not form. This is as simple as that. The meaning of this, why it does not go to the bainite range? Because during continuous cooling, you do not have bainite. Why is that so? That is why I was telling you that let me mark the temperatures also carefully here. See the nose. The nose itself has come down all the way to the bainite region and then it is again extending into the bainite range. I mean the perlite curves, the perlite lines are going over and beyond the bainite range. So even if you cool it down to the bainite temperature range, you have only perlite because it is extending over to the bainite range because the nose is here, right? The perlite would have started, sorry, the bainite would have started forming at around 450-500 degrees Celsius. But here we still have the perlite curve. Even here also you have the perlite start curve, right? Which is well within the bainite range. So there is a reason why it is like half. We are going to discuss all that in the next lecture. So, do not forget to tune in if you want to know more about CCT diagrams.